Hello, welcome to lecture 14 of the course. This is part 2 of the additional lecture on uh, continuous variable quantum entanglement. In this lecture, we will discuss quantum entanglement of two mode Gaussian states. Let us begin. A two mode Gaussian state can be written in the form of correlation matrix as follows. Sigma, that's the correlation matrix, I can write it in the form of block matrices alpha, beta, gamma, gamma transpose. Here alpha and beta represents the mode 1 and mode 2 respectively. Alpha for mode 1 and beta represents mode 2 and gamma is the correlation it is the correlation between mode 1 and mode 2. This matrix sigma can be rewritten in the standard form via simplectic transformation such that sigma is equal to simplectic transformation sigma as via this transformation S as transpose where S is a symplectic matrix. S is a symplectic matrix. And you are aware of this kind of form from the last class. Now, sigma S takes the standard form under this transformation. I can always express sigma in this standard form where we'll have for alpha, we'll have A0, 0, 0 A. For beta, we'll have B0, 0, 0 B. For gamma, we'll have C1, 0, 0 C2. And here, the transpose would be the same, C1, 0, 0 C2. And here, C1 is greater than C2. Let's say this is my equation number 2. Now, as you can see, all the block matrices are getting diagonalized. Moreover, one can define four symplectic invariants uh, as follows. There are four symplectic invariants are there. I can define them as say I1 is equal to determinant of alpha. Under symplectic transformation, determinant of the block matrix alpha does not get changed. That's what we mean by symplectic invariance. Then I have another three invariance. I2 is equal to determinant of beta. And invariant, another invariant is I3. That is the determinant of gamma. And the fourth invariant is I4 is the determinant of sigma or sigma s. Right. So these are the four determinants. Uh, four invariants we are having and in the given example in equation actually from equation 2 the invariants you can immediately see that i1 is equal to a square i2 is equal to b square i3 is equal to c1 into c2 and you can work out very easily the determinant of sigma s and we should be equal to determinant of sigma that would be a b minus c1 square a b minus c1 square into a b minus c2 square this is very trivial and please work it out it's simple let us now work out the symplectic eigenvalues of sigma s however before that let me discuss the procedure to find symplectic eigenvalues and in this case, uh, there is a theorem by Williamson and it helps us to find the symplectic eigenvalues of a matrix. This theorem goes like this. Say M be a positive definite real 2n by 2n matrix. There exists a symplectic matrix S such that this condition is satisfied. That means a symplectic matrix S is there who is diagonalized the matrix M. And this diagonal matrix is of rank N. The diagonal entries lambda J of D, the diagonal matrix, 
can be defined using the condition that plus minus i lambda z is an eigenvalue of the matrix omega into m or uh, lambda z is an eigenvalue of i omega m okay let us quickly see a proof of it uh, for a very simple case let us consider m is equal to i i is the unit matrix or the identity matrix now we know that this omega uh, is itself is symplectic which you can see very quickly from here if i take the omega transpose this is what i will get then that is equal to minus omega and then if i multiply omega transpose uh, from the right by omega then this is what i will get right this step is easy to see and then again if i multiply uh, this one uh, this second uh, step if you look at here then by omega on right then this is what i will get and this clearly shows this condition clearly shows that omega is uh, symplectic and moreover you can see from this equation that omega transpose omega is identity uh, identity matrix now quite clearly if i see omega transpose i into omega this is going to give me uh, identity or unit matrix itself which is itself is a diagonal matrix so we can conclude that there exists a uh, symplectic matrix omega uh, who is diagonalized the matrix i uh, so this is just an example that i'm giving you uh, to just prove the point here rather than going into the general proof now as regards the eigenvalue of uh, i omega into i is concerned uh, it's very easy to check it for n is equal to 1 for n is equal to 1 i omega i would be given by this 2 by 2 matrix and you know how to find out the eigenvalue of this matrix you just have to find the characteristic equation and trivially that's going to give you this equation and from here you see you are going to get lambda is equal to plus one and minus one uh, but here as i said as per the condition what was written here is this that minus plus sign is there right and that basically fixes the diagonal matrix d here and we are going to get one and one uh, in the diagonal of this matrix so i hope uh, you have a feeling or you are getting an idea about this williamson theorem and we are basically going to apply it and now the procedure to find symplectic eigenvalues of m is to find the eigenvalues of the matrix i omega m let us now apply this procedure to our correlation matrix sigma and uh, very easily we can now work it out sigma s this correlation matrix is in the standard form we are having this here c1 is greater than c2 and omega if you look at the previous class uh, last class lecture number 13 if you look at it the quantum mechanics portion for n is equal to 2 i have worked out what is uh, this omega matrix this omega matrix is this one then i omega sigma s will be uh, this equation uh, th this matrix you will get and you just have to to find out the eigenvalue you have to set up the characteristic equation and the characteristic equation you can get by solving this uh, determinant and if you solve this determinant then after some algebra you are going to get this equation you will get lambda to the power 4 minus a square plus b square plus twice c1 c2 lambda square plus a square b square plus c1 square c2 square minus a b c1 square plus c2 square is equal to zero this is what you will get now uh, also we know the so-called invariance uh, symplectic invariant we had determinant of alpha we wrote uh, for this particular matrix sigma x was a square and determinant of beta was b square 
determinant of gamma was c1 into c2 and determinant of the matrix sigma or sigma s sigma s was a b minus c1 square into a b minus c2 square this we have written earlier and in fact this is nothing but uh, this whole thing is determinant of sigma s so using this and also defining a quantity say delta delta let me define as a square plus b square plus twice c1 c2 so this if i say it's my delta then i can write this characteristic equation in this form lambda to the power 4 uh, minus delta lambda square plus determinant of sigma rather than sigma s i can write sigma also because it's symplectic invariant this is going to be equal to zero and if i solve this equation i will get lambda square is equal to this is a simple very easy to see you will get delta plus minus square root of delta square minus four uh, determinant of sigma divided by two so i have lambda is equal to uh, plus minus one half uh, one by root two okay into delta plus minus square root of delta square minus four determinant of sigma to the power half or i can write my uh, symplectic eigenvalues in this form now usually they are uh, denoted by nu plus minus so i have uh, got two symplectic eigenvalues they would be one by root two for sig nu plus i have delta plus square root of delta square minus four determinant of sigma to the power a half and for new minus i'll have here minus okay these are the two symplectic eigenvalues of the correlation matrix also one you please note that i1 was the symplectic invariant i denoted by i1 was determinant of uh, alpha right it was determinant of alpha i2 was determinant of beta and i3 was determinant of gamma and i4 was determinant of sigma so therefore i can also define delta as i1 plus i2 plus 2i3 also you can note one thing is that this is nothing but you know nu plus square plus nu minus square and determinant of sigma is you can verify it easily very straightforward sigma square uh, new uh, new square new plus square into new minus square now we'll probe into the relation between the uncertainty relation and the smallest symplectic eigenvalue of the correlation matrix smallest symplectic eigenvalue and uncertainty relation this uncertainty relation already i have written now i hope you can feel the reason why uh, omega is multiplied by i because that is going to give us real eigenvalues real values will get real uh, symplectic eigenvalues will get and because sigma obeys the correlation matrix obeys the symplectic condition i can write the uncertainty relation in this form and this sigma correlation matrix can be diagonalized if it is diagonalized this is what i can write okay now let us uh, find out the eigenvalues of sigma s uh, plus i omega 2 this whole uh, matrix uh, sigma s is if it is diagonalized then i can write this diagonal matrix uh, the symplectic eigenvalues are nu plus and nu minus and om i omega by 2 is this part and then total matrix would be this one 
now i can find out the eigen value by setting up the characteristic equation to find the eigen values of sigma plus i omega 2 the this characteristic characteristic equation can be uh, worked out solved and if it is solved you are going to get uh, very trivially uh, in fact if you do the algebra what you are going to get is this you will get nu minus minus lambda whole square minus 1 by 4 into nu plus minus lambda whole square minus 1 by 4 is equal to 0 and this is going to give you the eigenvalues as say lambda is equal to nu minus plus minus one half and another eigenvalue will get another set will get as nu plus plus minus one half okay so that means that overall you are going to get lambda is equal to uh, nu plus plus half nu plus minus one half nu minus plus half nu minus minus one half okay now for sigma plus i omega by two to be a positive matrix greater than or equal to zero or for sigma plus i omega to be a positive matrix positive matrix we want all the eigenvalues to be positive that means we must have we must have you see we always have nu plus nu plus is greater than nu minus okay that we know so therefore if you see the least smallest eigenvalue would be nu minus uh, in this case nu minus minus half so we must always have to have nu minus should be greater than or equal to half so this is the condition the all this smallest symplectic eigenvalue has to obey if the uncertainty relation is to be satisfied in other words the uncertainty relation boils down to the fact that the smallest the smallest symplectic symplectic eigenvalue must be greater than or equal to one half or in simple simple statement is nu minus should be greater than or equal to one half so you got a very very simple form of uncertainty relation in terms of the symplectic eigenvalue of the correlation matrix now let us discuss entanglement in two mode gaussian states earlier we discussed the so-called PPT criterion or positive partial transpose criterion which is also known as Perry's Horodoki criterion in the context of discrete variable quantum systems. Uh, this criteria that is PPT criteria uh, turns out to be extremely useful again for continuous variable system and we are going to consider it for two mode Gaussian states. Uh, in two-mode two Gaussian state, the PPT criterion can be used to determine if the two modes in the two-mode Gaussian state is entangled. Now, in terms of creation and annihilation, first of all, actually, I, I, we should be clear what we mean by partial transpose here. To understand that, uh, let us write the position and momentum operator in terms of the creation and annihilation operator we know the position operator can be written in this form here a and a dagger are these are operators and momentum operator 
can be written in this form okay now if i talk about the matrix representation of the creation and annihilation operator the matrix element of the annihilation operator is going to be given by this expression here i think you should be reminded that when and we are now talking about uh, fox basis in the fog basis when the annihilation operator operates on the number state we are going to get root over n n minus 1 and when a dagger operates on n you are going to get square root of n plus 1 n plus 1 get right this is the numbers that you will get so utilizing this relation you can get the matrix element uh, for the annihilation operator in this form and for the creation operator you are going to get this particular form so i can now write down the matrix form in the fog basis for the annihilation operator as well as the creation operator and if you look at the, these two operator form carefully you will see that a transpose if you take the transpose of the annihilation operator matrix you are going to get the annihilation uh, matrix for the creation operator and similarly if you take the transpose of the creation operator you are going to get the matrix for the annihilation operator so this is going to tell me that position operator is symmetric uh, when we take the transpose and while the momentum operator is anti-symmetric because if we take the transpose over the momentum operator we are going to get minus p now this uh, can be extended to our usual xi vector uh, where we are having all these are operators q1 p1 q2 p2 right now if i take the partial transpose over the second mode which i'm writing as xi uh, partial transpose tb xi tb then only here this momentum for the second mode is going to change its sign so all these are operators so this is what i will have that means i can go from the original xi to the partial transpose one by the operation of this by operating on it by this operator lambda and lambda is a diagonal uh, matrix uh, with elements one 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 minus one as you can see this can be extended to 2n by 2n correlation matrix sigma and the partial transpose of sigma corresponds to the mapping sigma tilde is equal to lambda sigma into lambda now let us explicitly work out the partially transposed uh, correlation matrix sigma tilde now lambda is the diagonal matrix 1 let me write lambda here 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 minus 1 and sigma and here we are talking about sigma s sigma s in the standard form it was a 0 0 a c1 0 0 c2 c1 0 0 c2 b 0 0 b and again the lambda matrix would be 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 and if you do the mathematics algebra matrix multiplication if you do the partially transpose matrix correlation matrix you are going to get would be a 0 c1 0 0 a 0 minus c2 c1 0 b 0 0 minus c2 0 b that's what you are going to get now the symplectic eigenvalues of sigma tilde this partially transpose matrix will be given by almost similar procedure and the symplectic eigenvalue you can work it out exactly the similar way symplectic eigenvalues 
eigen values of sigma tilde would be given by nu tilde square plus minus that would be equal to delta tilde i will define all these things delta tilde plus minus square root of delta tilde square minus 4 determinant of sigma tilde divided by 2 now here delta tilde would be defined in the similar way i1 plus i2 only thing is that in the earlier case you had a plus sign but here you will have minus twice i3 i1 i2 i3 are the usual uh, symplectic invariant that we defined earlier now under under the so-called ppt criterion criterion the uncertainty relation reads says uh, new uh, the symplectic eigenvalue new uh, tilde symplectic eigenvalue new tilde minus should be greater than or equal to half this already we have discussed so this is the uncertainty relation if the states has to be separable this is the uncertainty relation when we have taken the partially uh, partial transpose this restriction is obeyed by all separable correlation matrices this is very important and this is the crux of the whole thing this restriction this restriction must be must be obeyed by all separable separable correlation matrices okay if this condition is violated and that is extremely important if this condition is violated is violated then the two continuous variable mode of the gaussian state the two continuous variable or cv mode two continuous variable modes are entangled they are no longer separable so they are going to be entangled so the entanglement criteria entanglement criteria criterion is for continuous variable two mode gaussian state is that that the symplectic eigenvalue the smallest value of the eigenvalue smallest value uh, of the eigenvalue of the symplectic uh, symplectic eigenvalue of the partially transpose correlation matrix if it is less than one half then the two modes are entangled okay so generally the standard practice is to calculate the logarithmic negativity rather uh, by which you can basically uh, get an idea about uh, the amount by which the two uh, gaussian modes are entangled so logarithmic negativity uh, is defined by en that is logarithmic negativity it would be maximum of 0 minus logarithm 2 nu minus right nu tilde minus is the uh, okay let me write here minus i have put in the suffix so nu tilde is the lowest or smallest symplectic eigenvalue of the partially transpose correlation matrix therefore as you see the gaussian state is entangled if and only if so gaussian st gaussian state two mode gaussian state i am talking about state is entangled if and only if 
if and only if as you can see e n should be greater than 0 which is which is as you can see is equivalent is equivalent to nu tilde minus greater uh, less than one half right less than one half you can make it very easily it should be less than this is equivalent to this so logarithmic negativity is one of the most popular entanglement measure for continuous variable system in the context of gaussian states okay with this uh, let me complete the lecture and stop here i have tried my best to decode many complex concepts for you related to continuous variable entanglement uh, i hope now you'll be able to read uh, research literatures uh, and at least you'll be able to understand uh, many of the concepts related to continuous variable quantum entanglement and overall entang even in the context of discrete variable as well uh, maybe you can try to read uh, papers such as uh, this one say this work by Vitali and his co-authors in this work uh, they have discussed entanglement between a movable mirror and a cavity field the quanta of the movable mirror is a phonon and the quanta of optical cavity field is a photon so essentially they are discussing quantum entanglement between photon and phonon mode and they are two Gaussian modes and the researchers uh, in this work have used logarithmic negativity as the entanglement measure. Now some material of this lecture is taken from our review article on continuous variable quantum entanglement. Overall I hope that I was able to give you some idea about quantum entanglement and I sincerely thank you for attending the course. Thank you so much. Thank you.